Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard basic tactics video. This series so far for those of you who are new to it is all about just exploring the basic options that are available to the Imperial Guard specifically to the Imperial Guard platoon which is the backbone of any Imperial Guard force and it's just been exploring the different heavy weapons that are available to your uh, within your platoon. And so we've done the mortar, the heavy bolt, the auto cannon. So naturally we're progressing in terms of points. So the next video should be last cannons. Um, and so today we're looking at the missile launcher. So as per the normal format, I'll explain what the missile launcher is, how much it costs and so on like that. And then we'll go on to uh, what it pairs well with, what special weapons it pairs well with. And then where it should be be used in your platoon where is it best at home where will it be most effective so i like to try and keep these videos fairly short and sweet i've yet to get one under 10 minutes though but let's see if i can do it today so the missile launcher is 15 points so it's the next level up mortar was five points auto kind of heavy bolter were 10 points missile launcher is 15 points what you get 15 points is a weapon that has two distinct firing modes potentially three distinct firing modes but we'll get into that in a little bit so the two most common firing modes are frag and crack and i gotta tell you i love me some crack anyway <laughs> without getting uh, sidetracked frag and crack mode so the frag mode is a small you shoot a small blast strength four ap6 now for the longest time i literally i must I think for like 10 years, I shit you not, I thought the Frag Blast was AP5. I just, I just assumed it was. Now, very fortunately, it didn't ever really uh, affect my opponents because I, you know, I, I very rarely, very, very rarely used the Frag Blast. But for years, literally in the last six months, I learned that the Frag Blast was AP6. And for, for, for 10 years, I've been taking Garzan off without an armor save. Normally, they get a cover save, so it's been a moot point. But, you know, I have probably unfairly taken off hundreds of guardsmen over the, the last 10 years so there you go anyway lesson learned it's strength for ap6 small blast okay so that is your anti-infantry fire mode the second fire mode is the crack missile specifically called that because it's designed to crack open tanks Strength 8, AP 3, Heavy 1. That's right, you get one shot, so you better make it count. The two, so that's obviously, as, as I said, that's what we designed for taking, taking out tanks. Uh, range, must not be forgetting, range is very, very important with heavy weapons. Range 48 inches. Okay, so, uh, it's, so, what do we, so what, what do we get there? Well, we get a weapon which is obviously designed to be multi-purpose. Missile launcher is one of those weapons where, in theory, uh, you buy it so you can handle any target reasonably well. Um, now, for the longest time, a lot of people have told me a lot of, and I've seen a lot of people use the missile launcher, what I consider to be the wrong way. A lot of people use it as like, especially in other armies that aren't Imperial Guard, but and a lot of people who aren't Imperial Guard players will give me, as an Imperial Guard player, advice on how to choose the missile launcher. For example, Space Marine players. A lot of Space Marine players say you should just shoot, use the frag mode. You get more hits with the frag mode. I honestly almost never use the frag mode. Honestly, I don't. Because this, and missile launchers were probably one of the weapons that started off my philosophy of hit them hard or hit or don't bother. Go big or go home. That's a philosophy I have, isn't it? Because the strength A AP3 mode is one we're going to look at. Because it's one that I, I think is much, much more powerful. And the reason for this is the blast. Uh, typically, your opponent will space his models out quite well. And that will mean that with a one and a half inch blast template, you are lucky if you get two models. Lucky if you get two. And you can scatter and with the Guardsman's mediocre ballistic skill of three, you'll normally scatter quite a way away. Um, now, you do get to minus your ballistic skill, obviously, unlike with the Mortar. But ask yourself this question. 
This is the very this is this is my number one reason for saying uh you should you shouldn't use the missile launcher for its frag mode, okay. Not on its own. Ask yourself this question. For fifteen points you can use a missile launcher in a frag blast and fire one strength four AP six blast. For five points you can take a mortar and launch one at the same range, one strength four AP six blast. Which one's the better points? There you go. You should therefore the missile launcher should be used for crack mode. If you're paying an extra ten points for crack, which you basically are, then you probably should just use the crack mode more often. Now another the big reason why I like the uh the anti tank mode, the crack the crack missile. Love me the crack. I love me my crack missiles, right? It's because strength eight means that you will instant death. Any Space Marine character. Instant death. Any Space Marine model will be instant death. With the amount of feel no pain that exists in today's uh, 7th edition 40k. Like, honestly, no one feels any fucking pain anymore. Guardsmen feel the pain. But, like, no one feels pain. Every, every army out there pretty much has some way of getting feel no pain. On, on their basic squads. On their main squads. Like orcs, you get pain boys. Tyranids, you get I think it's cataclysm or catalyst, where you can uh, pick a unit and it, you know do a psychic power. You get psych, you get feeling no pain, and another unit get feeling no pain. Apothecaries for space marines. They uh, you can even get um, iron hands chat tactics. It's only six that feel no pain. Iron hands chat tactics it's still good. Scutari feel no pain. All the other, I'm pretty sure every army out there, apart from guard, or most armies out there, apart from guard, have access to feel no pain in large quantities. Goes without saying, you know, like death guard, you know, care space means have access to death guard. So the fact that you are strength eight means that you are going to ignore most, and AP three means you're going to ignore most people's armor saves, so they don't get an armor save. You're going to instant death, which means you're going to ignore the feel no pain, which means if you hit. And you wound with a missile launcher, you're probably going to kill something. And that's what we're all about. Go big or go home. You're only going to hit half time anyway, as a guard player. So make sure when you do hit them, they fucking feel it. So that's why I prefer the crack mode. Okay, so that's... Now for 10 points more, an additional 10 points, you can unlock the third firing mode on the missile launcher, which is flak missiles. Flak missiles, which takes you up to 25 points for the missile launcher, which is more expensive than a LAS cannon. Flak missiles are a trick sent by the dark gods of chaos. Satan himself came up with the idea of flak missiles. If I ever see flak missiles in an army, be it Imperial Guard or not, but if I, if, if I, if someone sends me flak missiles in a list that they want me to review. I'm letting you know now. It makes me angry. Okay. Because flat missiles are the worst upgrade in the Imperial Guard case. They're worse than hunter killer missiles. These hunter killers are basically a crack missile. Flat missiles gives you one shot. Strength 7. AP 4. Skyfire. So you for 10 points. for To make your weapon. To make your fucking... Missile launcher, more expensive than a last cannon, you get the opportunity to shoot one auto cannon shot at a plane. Such a fucking joke. It's just terrible. Strength, most flyers, most flyers are armor 11. And most flyers, and a lot of flyers are armor 12. Storm Raven, Vendetta, Valkyrie. So, most, but most of the time, you've got a 50% chance to hit. And then you have a 50% chance to even damage them. Okay. And even if you do damage them, you can't blow them up because you're only AP4. Okay. But even if you do hit them and you potentially damage them, they can just jink. Which means you have a 50% chance to hit, a 50% chance to wound, so to speak, and then 50% chance minimum because you know there are ways of improving jink 
for them to just ignore it. So it's just a fucking joke. A lot of the time when I see flat missiles taken, it's by newer players who go, well, I didn't have anti any anti-air in my army and I had two or three missile launchers, so I thought I'd better give them some flat missiles as a way of defending against air power. Let me tell you right now, that is just... I know what you're going for and I can forgive you for being a newer player and thinking that, but trust me, like with anything in the Imperial Guard, taking one or two of it, taking a little bit of this, a little bit of that, that's just wasted points. With the Imperial Guard, you do it in big numbers or you don't bother doing it at all. You want to take auto cannons? Take fuckload of auto cannons. You want to take last cannons? Take nothing but last cannons. That's my point. So, and if you're... If three flak missile, if you are a player who, who's taken a couple of flak, you've taken two missile launchers in some random ass squads and you put some flak missiles on them, just don't bother. Save them. Trust me. I've been playing guard for fucking 14 years, 13 years now. Okay. Now, admittedly, I've only had access to flak missiles for like three of those years, but I've been facing flyers since 6th edition and trust me, you don't need dedicated anti-air. Flyers aren't that good. You don't need dedicated anti-air in your infantry platoons, maybe I should specifically say. If you want dedicated anti-air, consider the Hydra. If you really want dedicated anti-air, depending on whether you're using the new Death from the Skies rules, use the Vendetta. Consider the Aegis defense line. But anyway, we're going off topic here. So, long-winded rant... But summarising that section, the flat missile, the missile launcher is 15 points. It is a versatile weapon. It has a long range, which means you can hit uh, any, pretty much any target you want on the battlefield. The frag mode is a bit of a trap. Uh, the crack mode is you, should be your go-to firing mode, um, especially if you're facing space marines. And the flat rockets are a trick from the trickster god Sonesh, uh, him, her, or itself. So, or should see each technically be the tricks to God. Oh well. Um, so where do, where should we? So it's long long winded rant that, and so I've gone over my fucking ten minute target. But oh well, that's just how much I hate flat missiles. Um, where should you use your missile launchers? Well, they have uh, they they kind of can go anywhere, kind of. Um, I think they're best suited in your infantry squads, though. Okay. I think they're best suited in either your infantry squads or your uh, heavy weapons teams. Okay. The reason they're suited in the infantry squad is they can be kind of used as like a budget last cannon option. You know, imagine you're playing a 750 point game. You know, you can you need to squeeze every point. You just, should take missile launchers over last cannons um, just because you save those five points um, so they should really and they so they can be used in um, in infantry squad they're all right to be used in infantry squad because they're versatile uh, I wouldn't put them in and the reason so I should say I've missed out missed out what do they combo well with um, I honestly think this launchers only really combo well with one weapon that's the grenade launcher the flamers I don't feel they combo well with uh, because I don't feel flamers combo well with pretty much any weapon I think flamers should be like a standalone thing um, if you're going to run guard between the flamers you should run them just with flamers because they're a close range weapon and they're not really very good for defensive measures but anyway that's a different video um, they don't really go well with the melt. They kind of go well with the melt gun because they're both strength eight. Um, so yeah, they kind of go well with the melt gun, but obviously the melt gun is quite short range, so it kind of goes well with the melt gun. Plasma gun kind of goes okay with, but again, the melt gun and the plasma gun—they're both expensive options. Um, and the missile launcher is a weapon that you should only really be taking when you're trying to squeeze points and. Uh, for lower point games, you know, when you when you can't quite afford those last cannons, so you sort of defeat the point of of taking them to squeeze points if you then go and slap on a fifteen point plasma gun as well. So that's why they don't really pair well. Because remember, the missile launcher should really be considered the last cannon on a budget. That's the key. 
So the reason they pair with the grenade launcher is because kind of like how the plasma gun and the las cannon pair as well because they're both same AP and they're both similar strength. The last cannon and the grenade launcher pair well because um, they're both similar strength, similar AP, um, and they kind of, you know, the grenade launcher is quite a good little at light anti-light vehicle weapon, and it's also quite good at putting wounds on space wounds simply because it's strength six, so you still be wounding them on twos, which is nice. Um, but also, the grenade launcher also has a frag mode. So the crack grenade launcher strength 6 AP4. The crack missile is strength 8 AP3. The frag missile is strength 4 AP6. And the frag grenade launcher is strength 3 AP6. Now, they're both small blasts. I think when you take a missile launcher and a grenade launcher together, it makes the missile launcher's frag mode worthwhile. On its own, individually, the frag mode of the missile launcher is a bit weak. But when you basically, for five points, get to fire two frag blasts, basically, um, it kind of becomes okay. It becomes pretty good at that point. So, you know, when... Because imagine this. When when you're shooting a 40-man platoon at a mob of, let's say, orcs or tyranids, or even a tactical... Pardon me, or even a tactical squad or something like that. Sometimes... You know, you want to put out as much anti-infantry firepower as possible. And so if you've got, let's say, a big mob of orcs, like a big 30-man, 30 30-orc 30 mob, if you unload a 40-man platoon with all those LAS rifles and then eight small blasts, all of which are ignoring armor, say, for the orcs, all the tyranids, you're just going to absolutely decimate that blob. So that's when I think the frag... So that's why I think the, the missile launcher and the grenade launcher pair so well together. And that's why I think the missile launcher has a good home in an infantry squad. Now, it goes without saying that I think the missile launcher is, you know, any heavy weapon is good in a heavy weapon squad, of course. But I feel like the missile launcher is one of the weakest. Because it's, it's, it's I, don't know, I don't know why, it's difficult to explain, but because it's an anti-tank weapon... It's going to draw a lot of firepower, so if you put it in a heavy weapon squad, which are relatively fragile, it'll die probably before you achieve your goal. If you put it in a infantry squad, which is why I think it's, it's better suited, not only if you're shooting the anti-tank mode a lot, if you're shooting the crack mode a lot, is it safer from the inevitable return fire, but also, if you decide to go on an anti-infantry roll with the missile launcher, uh, it pairs well nicely with the LAS guns and LAS pistols or bolters of the rest of the platoon. And so, to finish off the video, I think the missile launcher is actually a fantastic weapon in the Imperial Guard. I think it is more... I think it is, in the new day and age of go big and go home... With all the fucking grav bikes and just crazy, crazy bullshit out there. I personally feel that the missile launcher is the new, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but I personally feel the missile launcher is the new jack of all trades go to standard issue weapon of the Imperial Guard. And I feel to a certain extent it has replaced the auto cannon. And the reason for this is, is that the auto cannon uh, just struggles to deal with heavier armor which the missile launcher doesn't because it's strength eight it will punch through most armor quite easily and i feel like the auto cannon when sh when shooting at marines the auto cannon is pretty much just as effective as a heavy bolter whereas the missile launcher is way way more effective because of the ap3 so my so that's what I want to say. I think the missile launcher it is is it subscribes to the go big or go home philosophy. It's a good anti tank weapon to be used in lower points games. But when you start breaking like a thousand or one thousand five hundred points, I think you should really upgrade yourself to the las cannons. Okay, I think it does compete with the auto cannon now for the go to standard issue heavy weapon of the of the uh, of the imperial guard. Okay, so. If you face a lot of space marines, you definitely want to grab yourself some missile launchers. If you don't know what you're facing, you're probably safe bet to grab yourself some missile launchers. 
So this video has gone on way longer than I wanted it to, but I guess that's a testament to how versatile the missile launcher is and to how much I hate flak missiles, that uh, it can take a long time to explain all the different nuances of it. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Um, for you new players out there, I hope it's given you some... Uh, uh, some good ideas, you know, maybe consider some missile launchers if you're just going to be sticking to some low point games. Uh, and honestly, a bit like, I like a lot of the guard heavy weapons, the missile launcher won't really let you down. It's a solid weapon, doesn't break the bank, and, it, you know, if you face a lot of power armor, you can't go wrong with it. So, I'll see you guys next time, and thank you for watching.